Okay, welcome to chapter 4.1, graphing polynomial functions. The essential question for the chapter is, what are some common characteristics of the graphs of cubic and quartic polynomial functions? Hmm, no longer just quadratics. Okay, f of x equals a sub n times x to the power of n plus a sub n minus 1 times x to the power of n minus 1 plus dot 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 all the way out to a sub 1 times x plus a sub 0, where a sub n is not 0, is cubic when n equals 3, and quadratic, and quartic when n equals 4. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, let's just take a look. All this is is alphabetical listing. It's nothing really special. n equals 4, a sub 4, x to the 4. So that'd just be a sub four, some some coefficient for the first term to the x times x to the four, where n is four, plus a sub, well, n minus one. Well, if n was four here, n minus one is three, x to the n minus one, n was four. Now it's n minus one or one less. That's all this means, and it keeps going plus a sub 2x squared plus a sub 1x to the first, if you will, plus a sub 0x to the 0, or simply x to the 0 is 1. So that goes away, and that leaves us with our a sub 0 right here. Okay, and that's all that means. So whatever a is in this situation. It could be a one, it could be a two, it could be three, whatever. And the n is the number of terms. That's all that means, number of terms. So if you have n equals four, you have a quartic. If n equals three, you'd have a cubic because you wouldn't have this first term. You'd start with a sub three x cubed all the way down. This is a cubic. And if you get rid of this term, you then have a quadratic, which is what we've been dealing with in the last two chapters. And if you get rid of this term, then you have a linear function, ax plus b, or mx plus b. So it's really just that. It's just numbering and naming our terms. And what you will learn in this chapter is how to identify polynomial functions, graph polynomial functions using tables and end behavior. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, polynomial functions. Recall that a, pol a monomial, recall that a monomial is a number, a variable, or the product of a number and one or more variables with whole number exponents. Okay, so let's stop right there a sec. A monomial, mono meaning one. Monomial is a number. This is a monomial. A variable, that's a monomial, or the product of a number or one or more variables. So 4x, 4xy, 4xyz, it's all multiplication. Therefore, it is a monomial. If I then said plus x, now it's two terms broken up by plus or minus, and that'd be a binomial. Okay, so monomial, one term. So a polynomial is a monomial or a sum of monomials. A polynomial function is a function of the form f of x equals what we discussed on the last page, a sub n x to the n all the way down to a sub zero. Where a sub n is not zero, the exponents are all whole numbers and the coefficients are all real numbers, no imaginary, no i's. For this function, a sub n is the leading coefficient. There's a new term. The one in the lead, the first coefficient, is called the leading coefficient. N is the degree. So this is, so the power of your first term is the degree of your polynomial, which means if I had 4x to the fifth minus 5x squared plus 3x minus 7, my first term, my leading coefficient is 4, and the power or the degree of the polynomial is 5. The power of the first term is your degree. Okay. And a sub zero is the constant term at the end. Also your y-intercept. A polynomial function is in standard form 
when its terms are written in descending order of exponents from left to right. So if this is four, I can't have a five here. The five would have to go first. And then if it's descending, then it's in standard form. You're already familiar with some types of polynomial functions such as linear and quadratic. Here is a summary of common types of polynomial functions. So degree zero is a constant function, f of x equals a sub zero. An example of that is f of x equals negative 14. So if I graph that, it's a horizontal line at y equals negative 14. That is a constant. Give that a variable and put a number in front and have that be its rate of change or slope. And we have a linear function, f of x equals a sub one x plus a sub zero. And all we're doing here is we're taking this term and adding this, but now we have this term, which is right here and adding one, one greater, but then you have all of this, which is right here and you're adding one greater. And then you take all of those, which are right here and you add one with greater in front of it. And that's all it is. We just keep building up and the first terms numbers get larger and then it just repeats from there. So don't make it more difficult than it is. Um, a quadratic is degree two. So it's going to be the first term power two. And it doesn't have to have any more terms. As long as the first term is degree two, it's a quadratic. Um, a cubic is degree three and a quartic is degree four. Okay, so let's take a look at example one. Okay, example one says to decide whether each function is a polynomial function. And if it is, if so, write it in standard form and state its degree, type, and leading coefficient. So if I look at this, the first thing you want to look at is power of three. This is a power of one. And this is a power of x to the zero because x to the zero is one and then it would just cancel. So it goes three, one, zero. It's in standard form. This is an integer. This is an integer. This has a power of zero, which is also an integer. So a is a polynomial. It is a polynomial. And if it is, write it in standard form. Well, it already is in standard form. So I'd say f of x equals negative 2x cubed plus 5x plus 8. 3 is greater than 1. 1 is greater than 0. They're in descending order of power. That is standard form. Degree. The degree of my polynomials, the leading coefficient's power. This is degree 3. Um, type, it's a cubic because it's degree three. And when they say type, all you got to do is go back one page. And here are our types, constant, linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic. It's degree two, so it's a, or degree three, so it's a cubic. Okay. And leading coefficient, leading coefficient is negative two. Okay. So there's A. Let's move on to B. B, I have a degree three, I have a degree four, I have a degree zero. So they're all integers. So it is a polynomial. So decide whether each function is a polynomial and I'll just say, yes, it is. And then if so, put it in standard form. So G of X equals three is less than four. So I need to put the square root of two X to the fourth first minus 0 0.8 x cubed minus 12. Now I have 4, 3, 0. They're in descending order as powers go, and that's in standard form. And then degree, the degrees power of your leading coefficient, degree 4. So it's a degree 4. And type, again, if you go back here, it's a quartic right here, degree 4. Type quartic. So you'd write quartic. And then leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is the square root of two. C. C. Two. Uh oh. Not a polynomial. 
The reason this is not a polynomial is over here by definition, it says here a polynomial is a monomial or sum of monomials. A polynomial function is in this form. Exponents are whole numbers and the coefficients are all real numbers. Okay, so right there is a failure. You need to know your number types. A whole number, if I had a number line, whole numbers start at zero and go one, two, three, four to infinity. Negative one is not a whole number. Negative one is an integer. So since I have a number that is not a whole number as a degree, this is not a polynomial. And we're done. If it's not a polynomial, we can't state leading coefficients and all that stuff. Okay, so finally, the last one, D, K of X equals X squared plus three to the power of X. This X right here is a variable. Variables are not whole numbers. That could I could put in one half for X. I could let X equal pi. It could be irrational. I could let X be negative. So therefore, this is not a polynomial. Okay, and so therefore I cannot put it in standard form. I cannot list its leading coefficient or its degree. It is not a polynomial. Okay, so at this point you should be able to do the problems three, four, and six in your homework. Okay, this is just a really simple review question, only we're using a polynomial instead of a quadratic or a linear function. This is just simple substitution. So problem or example two says evaluating a polynomial function. Evaluate f of x equals this polynomial. It is of degree four. It goes four, two, one, zero. It's in standard form. It's a degree four leading coefficient of two. And therefore it is a quartic degree four. It says to evaluate this when x equals three. All you have to do is say f of three equals two. And everywhere you see an x, Put a three. Okay, simply substitution. So you write the formula. Actually, it was written there, so I didn't write it. Substitute the givens. Now we simplify and solve. Always do your exponents first. Three to the fourth power. Three times three is nine. Times three is 27. Times three is 81. Three to the fourth power is 81. Minus 8 times 3 squared is 9, plus 5 times 3 is 15, minus 7. Then you take care of your multiplication. 2 times 81 is 162, minus 9 times 8, which is 72, plus, and these were already done. I'm just going to bring down the 15 minus 7 because order of operation says whenever you have addition and subtraction, you just work left to right. So now we just need to finish. 162 minus 72 is 90, plus 15 is 105, minus 7 is 98. So f of 3 equals 98, which means what is y when x is 3? y is 98. And that is evaluating a polynomial function. Now you should be able to do 11, 12, and 14 in your exercises. All right, a new term, end behavior. The end behavior of a function's graph is the behavior of the graph as x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity. For the graph of a polynomial function, the end behavior is determined by the function's degree and the sign of its leading coefficient, a. So the core concept states that end behavior of polynomial functions degree odd, leading coefficients positive. If it is odd, it goes up, down, up. Okay, so think of it as doing three things. It's increasing to that vertex, it's decreasing to this minimum, and it's increasing forever after that. And actually, I shouldn't have this line over here, and I shouldn't have that line there. Okay, so it's increasing, then it's decreasing, then it's increasing. How many things did it do? Three. It went up, then it went down, then it went up. Up, down, up is three things. The degree is odd, degree three. End behavior odd, positive leading coefficient. So if it's odd, one arrow is going to go down to negative infinity and one end is going to go up. So that's when we have an odd degree. They're going to go opposite directions at the end. So it's either going to 
Can I do this this way or that way? Odd, even both up or even both down. And we'll get to that in a minute. So it goes up first, down second, and then up again. So if you ignore the middle, if it's increasing over the whole domain, then it is a positive leading coefficient, okay? And so now let's take a look at the next one. It says degree odd. So again, the ends are doing opposites. This one is going up to infinity as we go to the left forever. So as X goes to negative infinity, the function's going to positive infinity. And as X goes to infinity, the function's going down. And this is going down, then it's going up, and then it's going down. Odd degree, actually degree three. And when it's negative, if you erase the center turn and over the whole course of this, it is going from up to down negative. Okay, so it's end behavior is going to start going to the top, going up, and at this end, it's going to go down. That is for a negative end behavior or negative leading coefficient, I mean. And then degree even. So we have down, it can do the number of things. This is a fourth degree polynomial here, maybe. <clears throat> okay, at least four. So it is decreasing, turning, increasing, turning, decreasing, turning, increasing. So as x goes to negative infinity, as x goes to the left, the function's going up. As x goes to the right, the function's going up. That is positive, even. Okay. And then the last one is even but negative. So up, down, up, down, even degree. It's doing four things. It's increasing, it's decreasing, it's increasing, it's decreasing. That's four different things. That's a degree even. This has at least a degree four. And we'll get into that in the future, why I say at least. And as the function goes to negative infinity, so I'll explain this more in the first example. So the function's going down as x goes to the left, and the function is going down as x goes to the right. Okay, so that is end behavior. Okay, so here's example three, describing end behavior. It says, describe the end behavior of the graph of f of x, which equals negative 0.5x to the fourth, plus 2.5x squared, plus x minus one. So I'm just going to review everything here. Leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is negative 0.5. Five. That's my A. A equals negative 0 0.5. The degree, the degree is the power of our first term. It is in standard form, 4, 2, 1, 0. It's in, it's in order. Degree 4, that is a quartic. That is called a quartic. This is a quartic. Leading coefficient, negative 1 half. A is negative 1 half. Degree 4, quartic. If it's degree four, if it was degree two and negative, I hope by now you know that that's a parabola opening down. So that's a negative A. In a quartic, it does the same thing, except it doesn't do up and then down, which is two things, power of two, it's a power of four. So it goes up, down, up, down in some fashion. This could go way up here, or this one could go up higher, or they could be even. But anyway, this is degree four with a negative A. So that's what the graph looks like. And then I'm just going to throw in a coordinate plane, call this X and call this Y. So think of a guy walking, okay? He's walking on the X axis. If he goes this way, he's going in the negative X direction. So you'd say, as x approaches negative infinity, right? As I'm going to the left, where if so now he's over here, okay? So now he's over here. What, does he look up or does he look down to see this blue function line? And it's down. So as x, as this blue, green guy x goes to the left, as he goes to the left on the x axis, the function is going down. F of X is approaching negative infinity. Hopefully that makes sense to you with this 
uh, analogy. Um, so now he's not going left anymore and he's not over here anymore. Let me get rid of this guy and he's not going left. Now he's going this way. So you'd say as X approaches positive infinity or just simply infinity without the plus sign, as he's going to the right, he again has to look down to see this function going this way. So the function is approaching negative infinity. Okay, so as he goes to the left, it's going down. As he goes to the right, the function's going down. That is the end behavior for example three. And if the function were going up, it's, you'd say as X goes to the right or goes to positive infinity, if he if this function turned and went up, then he would be then you would say the function is going to positive infinity. So with this explanation, hopefully you can do problems 17, 18, and 20. Okay, so here's example four, graphing polynomial functions. So the graph A, f of x equals negative x cubed plus x squared plus 3x minus 3. Remember, make sure they're in descending order. 3, 2, 1, 0. This is in standard form. My leading coefficient is negative 1, and my degree is 3. So if you have a negative degree 3, it goes down, turns, goes down. Okay, so it looks something like that. So what we want to do when we do these is choose a set of values, x comma y, and let's just go from negative 2 to 2. Okay, and let me get this out of the way, and let me erase this, and we're just going to plug these values in. So negative 2 to the third power is negative 8, and negative negative 8 is 8. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, and minus 3. So 8 plus 4 is 12, minus 6 is 6, minus 3 is 3. So it's over 2, up 3. So here's my first point. Okay, and that's all you do. Just keep going. Negative 1 to the third power is negative 1. A negative negative 1 is 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So we get 1 plus 1 is 2, minus 3 is negative 1, minus 3 is negative 4. So we get the point negative 1, negative 4. Okay, and then plug in zero, we get our constant negative three. So that's over zero down three. So this thing is coming down so far. It's really hard to draw on this pad accurately. It's coming down like so, okay. And it's turning and it's turning back up. <clears throat> now we're gonna substitute in one. One cubed is one, so that's gonna be negative one plus one squared plus three times one, minus three. Zero, 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 over one up zero. So there's a solution to our system, or our function, I mean. It's not a system. Okay, and then finally two. Two to the third power is eight, so that's negative eight, plus two squared, which is four, plus three times two, which is six, minus three. Negative eight plus four is negative four, plus six is two, minus three is negative one. So over two down one is right here, so this is going to turn and go back down. And make sure you put arrows at each end and you should label it. F of X equals negative X cubed plus X squared plus three X minus three. And check it in your calculator. So let's turn the calculator on and I've already put this in and I go to Y equals and there it is and I hit graph. And sure enough, if I move this over here, this graph looks like what I have here. Okay, so go back to y equals clear, minimize, and let's go on to the next problem. <clears throat> so we're going to choose an x. We're going to get a y with those choices. Let's just use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 again. This is 4, 3, 2, 0. This is in standard form. I have a leading coefficient of one, it's positive, and a degree four. That is going to look like this, something like that. It looks like a W and both end behaviors is as you as X goes to negative infinity, Y goes, or F of X goes to infinity. And as X goes to infinity, Y goes to infinity. So they're both going up forever. So if I substitute in negative two to the fourth power, that's 16 and a negative to a even power is positive. So that's just gonna be 16. 
two times two is four times two is eight and it's negative. So it's minus a negative eight or plus eight. Okay, and negative two squared is four times four is 16. So that's minus 16 plus four. The 16s cancel, eight plus four is 12. So I go left two up 12. Let me get this out of the way now. Left two up 12 is way up. Actually, it's off my screen, so it's gonna continue. <clears throat> so there's the first one. Then I substitute in negative one. Negative one to the fourth is one. Negative one cubed is negative one. Minus a negative is plus. Negative one squared is one. So that's gonna be minus four times one or minus four plus four. So it's two and these cancel, so I get two. Negative one up two. So now my line or my function is coming down and it's going to go through the point negative one, two. Zero is the easy one. You get your constant at the end, which is four. So zero, four is here. So this thing must have turned and gone back up to here. And now let's do one. One to the fourth is one. Minus one cubed is one. Minus four times one is four plus four. One minus one is zero, minus four is negative four, plus four is zero, and it comes back down to one, zero. So this is going to turn and come back down like so. And we know it's got to turn one more time because it has to go to positive infinity because it's a degree four. So two to the fourth power is 16, minus two, two to the third power, which is eight, minus two squared, which is four times four is 16 and plus four. So the 16s cancel, negative eight plus four is negative four. So I go over to down four, and this is going to continue down here, and it has to turn and go back up. So I'll check that. I'm gonna put another point in. I'm gonna put three in. I wanna know where that thing is going. Three to the fourth power. Three times three is nine times three is 27 times three is 81. Minus three to the third, which is 27 minus three squared, which is nine times four is 36 plus four. 81 minus 27 is 54. 54 minus 36 is 18. 18 plus four is 20. So over at three, we are way up at 20. So this thing actually got steep and it went way up to 20 for three. So it's not looking like that. Okay, that is a really steep turn. Soon as, as with degree four, larger the number, the faster it grows. So now we're going to check that in our calculator. So we turn our calculator on, clear it, and we put x to the power of four minus x to the power of three. Whoops, I didn't get out of my power last time. Let's try that again. x to the power of four, arrow out of it, minus x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4 graph. Okay, and there it is, and it looks like this. Okay, so that is graphing polynomial functions. Now you should be able to do 25, 26, and 28. Okay, example 5 says to sketch a graph. Sketch a graph of the polynomial function f having these characteristics. And there's four bullet points. f is increasing, decreasing, positive, negative, and use the graph to describe the degree and leading coefficient. So the first thing I'm going to do for this, I'm going to draw vertical lines and break this up. So I'm going to use, I'll use red to, to, to decipher when it's increasing and decreasing. Okay. So it says f is increasing when x is less than zero. Well, that's the y-axis. So I'm going to put a line right here. So it's increasing over here. So it's coming up. And then it's also increasing when x is greater than four. So these are the parameters. So really quickly, I'm just going to draw a quick sketch as to what this means. f is increasing when x is less than zero. So in other words, this function is coming up until it gets to here. And it's also increasing here, okay? So it's decreasing in between. So there's what it's doing right there, basically. But then we have other things that we have to look at. So this was just the first bullet point. And that's why I drew these red lines, going up until I got to this red line, which is when x is zero. 
and then it decreases until we get to four. And then when X is greater than four, it increases. It says F is decrease, decreasing between zero and four. So I've done the first two, that's that and that. Now it says F of X is positive. In other words, it's above the X axis. So I'll make positive green and I'll do a line that's green for this. And it says F of X is positive when X is between negative two, which is here, and three, which is here. Let me make those a little thicker. It's hard to see. Okay, so f of x is positive between negative 2 and 3. So I'm above the x-axis. So this is incorrect right here now because it went negative right here, and it's got to stay positive to here. So I'm going to fix this now and bring it to there and erase this. Okay, hopefully this makes sense to you. A function is positive when it's above the x-axis. And I need to change this to here. So it's turning negative at negative two. So I'm going to erase this portion over here. And now this has to get moved. So it's it, there might be some erasing involved or you might wanna just wait and put dots on this X axis to do this. Okay, so F of X is greater than zero. In other words, the function's positive when x is greater than negative two and less than three. So it's above the x axis between two and three. And then it comes back down. And then again, at x greater than five. So I'm gonna draw another vertical line at five. That's green, a little thicker, and it's going to be right here. Okay, so now I know my function is dropping negative down here, turning and then at five. So this is in an okay location right now and turning and going back up. So I'm just gonna get rid of this little piece here and clean this up a little bit. So you may need to erase, you may need to move stuff around. Okay, so let me double check this. F of X is positive between negative two and three. I am above the x-axis from negative two to three. Then it drops down below the x-axis until I get to five. And then at five and greater, it's gotta be above the x-axis. That's what x is greater than five means. It is positive at five and greater. F of x is negative. When something's less than zero, it's negative. When x is less than negative two, so that's this, and it is negative, it's below the x-axis. When x is less than negative two. And between three, and five. So between here and here, it is also negative. So here is my function in pretty good shape right there. I don't know the maximum, I don't know the minimum, but I do know this is how it's turning and I do know it is above the x-axis here, below the x-axis here, and above the x-axis to infinity over here, and then below the x-axis to infinity over here. So I've done all of these and it says use the graph to describe the degree and the leading coefficient of f. So this is going up, then down, then up. That's three different things. So this is degree three. Okay, and it's positive, negative, then positive forever. So the leading coefficient is positive. So I know I have um, a positive, my first term, I don't know what the number is, but I know my first term is x cubed. This could be two, it could be four, it could be six, but it is positive, okay? So that is the leading coefficient, positive degree three. Okay, so now you should be able to do numbers 37, 38, and 40 on your homework. Okay, example six says solving a real life problem, the estimated number V in thousands of electric vehicles in the United States can be modeled by the polynomial function given. It is a cubic, if you always look to see if it's in standard form, power of three or degree three, two, one, zero. So they're in order, it's in standard form. Leading coefficient is three and it is positive. So it is a positive cubic. So it's going to look like that. Okay, so it says to 
um, this is the equation, and it says where t represents the year with t equaling one is 2001. So if I plugged in zero, that'd be t equals zero. That'd be the year 2000. If I made this zero and this zero and this zero, they'd all be gone and end up with negative two. <laughs> Can't have a negative number of cars. So basically what they're saying is there were no um, electric vehicles in 2000. So if I plug in a one, that's 2001, this would be 0.15, this would be negative three, this would be plus 23, and this would be minus two. So just approximating, I'd get, this is close to zero. This is negative three, plus 23 is 20, minus two is 18. So I know that at one, we're right around 18. So if I go to my window right now, and they said right here to use the interval one to 10 on your X axis, which is our T axis, if you will. So I've already change that to one to 10. And let me just explain this again. This was right around, what did I say? Zero, negative three, 20 minus two is 18. If I put 20 in here right now and hit graph, I just saw this little smidge right here. So you just can mess around with the window now. And so I come down and let's go a little bit higher. Let's go 30 and hit graph. Okay, and now I can see the graph and that's how you adjust your window. Okay, wait till it finishes and then go to window. So I'm going to go a little bit higher. I'm going to go to 50. And I hit graph and I want to see what this thing is doing. So it's turning and it's starting to, the growth is starting to slow. So I'm going to add a little bit more. We're not high enough yet. And I'm going to go to 60. And this is just how you play around and find your window values. So now it's turning, turning, turning. Oh, there it is. So it came up. It didn't really dip. It, it came up. It turned. And then it's going back up again. Cubics can do that. <clears throat> and so it's continuing on. So if I change my window and go a little bit higher, say 70, then it's coming up. It's turning, turning, turning again, and it's starting to go back up again. But they told us to graph between 1 and 10. And this is the year 2022. So really what I could do is I could change my maximum, my X max to 22. That's this year and see what this graph is doing up until this year. So it did turn and start get growing. So what happened? So that means the automotive industry was focusing on electric vehicles and creating the increase in the number of electric vehicles every year was going up pretty significantly until a certain year. And then it leveled off. They didn't add to production. And then all, all of a sudden, again, there was a demand and the growth grew again. So there is our graph, and that is our analysis of our graph. So let's get this stuff out of the way. So A is done. We graphed it. So use a graphing calculator to graph it. What does the average rate of change in the number of electric vehicles in use from 2001 to 2010? What was the average rate of change? So how do we find average rate of change? We find two points and we do the slope formula. So V0 um, the year 2001 and 2010 correspond to T equals 1 and T equals 10. So we want to find the over this interval the average rate of change. Those are my x's. So remember rate of change is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and it would be x2 is 10 x1 is 1. But what were our y values at 1 and 10? So I can hit second, calculate a value. I hit enter. And it says when x was 10, what was y? y was 58.57. OK? 58.57. So I put 58.57 minus, and I want to know what the value of the function is at one. So I hit second, calculate, values okay, hit enter. And now I want to know when x was one, what was y? And it was 18.58. Okay, so I'm going to go to my home screen now. And I'm going to take 58.57 minus 
and I get 39.99 or approximately, I'll just do an approximation of 40 divided by nine. Let me not use equal signs. This is an approximation. So I take that divided by nine and I get 4.44. The average rate of change in the number of electric vehicles in use from 2001 to 2010 was approximately 4.44. So that's B. Where V is in thousands. So that's 4,444 cars. Or 4,440. 4,443 and a third cars to be exact. Okay, and then it says, do you think the model can be used for the years before 2001 or after 2010 and explain your reasoning? Well, I can't go before 2001 because I already explained that if we went to zero, we'd get a negative number of cars. We can't have a negative number of cars. So can the model be used before 2001? So I would say no. And could it be used after 2010? And I think it can because it is 2022 and we could actually use this model to predict future car sales. Okay, so notice that I went only out to 10 and now I'm going all the way out to 22. I don't see the graph anymore, so I could change my window and obviously the car growth is increasing. Let's do 150 this time, see what happens there. So it's turning, going up. Okay, so even at 150, we haven't gotten to 22, so I want to make that larger. So I go to my window, and oops, not second window, my window, and let's try 250. I'm just trying to find where the graph goes to the end of the screen, where my year is going out to this year. And we're almost there. I want this to reach over to here. So I want to increase my Y until I get there. So I'm just estimating change so how about 400 and i hit graph so now it's turning turning going back up and at 400 we still aren't at this year this is 2022 2021 2020 we're right around 2019 now so if i go back to my window and change that to 500 we're getting closer and closer to this graph fitting the screen so it's turning and then going back up and we're still not off the screen over here, so I can increase it some more. So I'm gonna to go to 600. And finally, it doesn't reach. So now I can hit second, calculate value. This year is 2022, and it was 542,000 electric cars this year. So yes, I think the model can be used for years after 2010, but not before 2001. Okay, so that's how you look at a real life problem, analyze it using a graphing calculator and determine future trends from it as well. So at this point, you should be able to do number 41. Okay, this brings us to the end of chapter 4.1. And here are the exercises, if you haven't done them from example to example, this is the list of all of them. Okay, have a great day.